Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me ask this question. I think Lola asked this. Lola wanted to know if the folks at GOA have, um, like, if, if you guys think about these kinds of stuff, you know, uh, a, a situation like this um, that's happening around uh, the country from these people. Um, man, I, you know, for me, I feel weird talking about it because I don't want anything to happen to you guys. But do you guys have measures and things like that? Do you guys spend time training? Um you know, and, and don't, like, divulge anything to us, but do you guys prepare, unfortunately, for moments like this happening? Well, I'll just speak for, for myself. I, I'm blessed to uh, have a range on my property, and I don't, I still don't get to shoot as much as I would like, but mm -hmm. I, I do train as often as I can when I'm not on the road for GOA, uh, and I shoot, and, and I'm, you know, I don't claim to be a John Wick or anything, but I, I'm competent. Uh, with with my firearms and I carry everywhere I go and uh, I, I'm always I'm ready to protect myself um, and I I'm always I try to be situational aware and be looking around for potential threats and mm -hmm. and um, you know God forbid if I gotta go to work I gotta go to work so um, hope she always got some good attorneys for me um, but you know I, and I don't think, you know, there's a certain target on my back because I work for GOA, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just, you know, it goes back to what I said earlier. I want to protect good, innocent people. And that's why I carry a gun. That's why I train. So Yeah. I would think, like, going back to the conversation we were having earlier, I would think that people like this, you know, it would be just as likely as they would go to a pr police precinct, you know? Uh, a place called Gun Owners of America, probably. <laughs> You know, you now, know, if you've you lost know, your mind. Mm -hmm. Many people, uh, you know, GOA, we have people all over the country. And, you know, I don't work in an office, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I do know our our Springfield office where we're headquartered. It, there's lots of guns in that office. So that's not a not mm -hmm. a soft target that you would want to, to attack. So yeah. I'll just So it's it you're saying it's not, GOA is not a gun-free zone? No. No. <laughs> no. We, we are fighting the gun-free zones nationwide. Yeah. Why be a gun-free zone? Exactly. That would be the, the highest level of hypocrisy. So, so uh, it, is, it is really kind of cool because when I fly and I go all over this country uh, speaking for GOA, and generally when I fly, uh, so when I went to uh, South Carolina, I met Jordan there, mm -hmm. and... As soon as I met up with Jordan, he pulls out a pistol and hands me a pistol and said, here, this is what you're carrying as long as you're here. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and if I go to, uh, I'm going to go to Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm going to meet up with Monty Bowen, which is our Pacific Regional Director. Mm -hmm. And when I meet up with Monty, he's already got a pistol for me to carry when I'm in Arizona, you know, mm -hmm. I, I flew out. I was in Wyoming not long ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I met with Mark Jones, and Mark Jones gave me a pistol. Said, "This is what you're carrying as long as you're here, you know, okay. as long as there's." I'm assuming when you land in Alaska, it's like a 10 millimeter. I don't know if it changes as you go around the. <laughs> oh, it, it absolutely, in Alaska, needs to be a 10 millimeter. You know. Uh -huh. The four-legged predators out there are way bigger than the, you know. And, yeah. and, and that, that goes to it. GOA people are gun people. Like, uh, I tell people all the time, I live a Second Amendment lifestyle. I, I carry a gun everywhere I go. There's some days I don't leave the house, but I don't get out of bed with put, uh, without putting a gun in my pants. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's just my lifestyle. You know, mm -hmm. I'm in a room right now with lots of guns, you know, and – and I'm ready to use them, God forbid, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, we don't – it's just not theoretical for us. It's just not something we write about or or we think about, but it's a lifestyle that we live. We, we own guns. We carry guns. We shoot guns. We hunt with guns. Mm -hmm. We This is a part of our, our life. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there, there was a friend of mine who's a trainer a long time ago told me this is a martial art. 
and you know gun ownership is a martial art and i i believe that and, and you know like any other martial art it's a, it's a form it's your life right you're not just uh practicing and training in the use of this sword or your hands or your feet you know this this whole thing becomes your discipline in your way of life if that makes sense to to you guys and and also right along with that and mm -hmm. which Go Which ahead, you can show off, Jordan. Yeah, you can show. He's showing so, off okay. right now, Steve. He's, well, he's showing off. He's, fle he's flex because he knows Steve is in the car and didn't bring his arsenal <laughs> with him, so now he wants to flex. <laughs> So, so all right, we're talking about 10 millimeter, which is the best millimeter. And, and this oh, is, Lord. This what is did I my, get started? Okay. my Glock 20. There's many mm -hmm. like it, but this one's mine. And, mm -hmm. um, of course, we got the flashlight up front. And I, I, um, I, I put, I have a little point delta point micro on this. And some people don't like this sight, but I do. And, um, one of my goals is to take a deer with a handgun. So, one maybe maybe this year season if the opportunity protects it, presents itself, I will. But this is my woods gun because you never know when you're running to, to Bigfoot, and you know <laughs> I, I just I just want to be prepared okay. when I meet Bigfoot because that would be that would look really good on my wall. I like right? how you said that yeah. with a straight face. <laughs> so, but you, but you never know, right? So this this is my gun for the the woods. Uh -huh. My 10 millimeter, and then uh -huh. while we're at it, this is my uh -huh. new gun uh, for for other places. This is the Shadow Systems XR 920. I'm so sorry about my phone slipping, but um, uh -huh. I really like this gun. It's my peanut butter gun. Um, my wife has a purple gun, mm -hmm. um, and so together they're peanut butter and jelly. Oh wow! So, <laughs> so that, that's kind of that's kind of our joke. So I right. I, I got peanut butter. She has jelly. And, uh -huh. um, right, yeah, right. They, we don't go anywhere, anywhere without our peanut butter and jelly. Nice. That's very really cool. Well, Steven, go ahead. Way, when mm -hmm. you talk about caring as a lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, there is another podcast out there that talks about good, sane, moral, prudent people. Mm -hmm. And you need to be that. You need to mm -hmm. be more aware when you're caring. You need to be understanding that if somebody tries to lure you into a fight that it's better to back down swallow a little pride back down instead of forcing an issue where you might be forced to take someone else's life mm -hmm. uh, over just a, an argument or something too mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they say an armed society is a polite society, and it is indeed. Even when somebody uh, tries to escalate something over something that's minor, it's better for you as a gun owner to walk away from it if it's not threatening anybody. Uh, and I tell people all the time, if you're not willing to go to jail for what's going on, don't pull a gun. You have to know, and again, that day when I ran across the street, I knew the consequences of me not doing it were greater than the consequences of possibly going to jail. Mm -hmm. And if you use that as a measuring stick, the responsibility of gun ownership sometimes may be perceived by someone as, well, you didn't stand up for yourself. Well it wasn't worth me taking someone's life if he got violent it was better to walk away from that and maybe take a little bit of a um, you know swallow a little pride and walk away and be good sane sober and prudent and don't get into that fight to begin with yeah when you say that I, what the the image that immediately comes to my mind that this was going around like instagram i've seen it on twitter there was uh, some kids skateboarding or something like that, and a guy pulls up with his car and then gets out with his gun for some reason. And I was like, "What? Why? <laughs> you know? Because these kids are skateboarding. He's like getting out, and walking around with his gun. No, listen. There are some people like that. No, that is not what this life is about. That's not why we do this. Um, you know, it, it's um, it, it's sad when you see people doing that, but you know." Unfortunately, there's just there's some there's some folks out there who don't understand that kind of stuff, right? So
Make sure to check out handstrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.